Hello everyone. In the last video, we uh, we seen uh, first method of uh, scanning, which is used in the tracking data, and that method is called uh, monopulse tracking method. See, in the monopulse tracking method, we use multiple beams. We use multiple beams to get the angle error information and to track the uh, targets. Multiple beams are actually required, and by using one uh, radiation beam, it is uh, ang angle information is actually obtained. Now, I'll go to the second method that is called conical scanning method and sequential lobing method, where single beam is actually used, and the single beam is used in a time shared basis. That means uh, the same beam is actually shifted in the position. And the echo signals are received from the two points for a one coordinate system, one angle. And echo, by using the error signal, whatever we get because of the two uh, radiation beams, means single beam in a two different positions on a time sharing basis. We calculate the angle information and in which direction we have to rotate the antenna. So this is what the technique used in both uh, conical scanning and sequential lobing method with a small difference between those methods. So we will understand uh, what is sequential lobing and conical scanning is. So, I'll start with the first method. The first method is sequential lobing method or it is also called lobe switching or sequential switching. These diagrams are familiar to you. I explained that in the last video also. But the how it is generated, how these radiation beeps are generated, so that is different. Now just look at this uh, radiation pattern. We have a two squinted beams and these two in the two different positions. And the two beams, radiation beams are generated by using a single feed. Okay, the same feed is actually uh, rotated in a different direction. Okay, now this uh, this is the both side direction again. Okay, this is the, wherever that coincides, and target is available at this particular uh, uh, position. We can say that is very uh, you can say uh, close to the second uh, uh, radiation beam. Okay, and this is actually a rectangular representation. This is the polar representation of the same radiation pattern of the uh, or beam pattern of the antenna. Now just look at again same. This is position one. This is position two. This is the switching axis or a both side direction, the coinciding point. And my target is uh, in this direction or this is the target axis. I can say. So that means I get a more amplitude because of this radiation beam. And uh, this is the solid line is the position one. So I get less amplitude here. So those error signals are represented over here, the amplitudes. So this is the position one, because of the position one, this radiation pattern, the solid line, this is the amplitude level what I'll get from the second one. So the, when the difference is taken, uh, based on that, the angle error we get, the error signal, the magnitude of the angle error, and based on that, we will rotate the antenna in that direction. And when it goes to the both side direction, the switching axis and the both side direction is matches, then these amplitude levels are same. Okay, and we track the uh, target with that particular direction. That's what actually we do. This is sequential lobing or lobe switching method. Now, <clears throat> that is for one coordinate system. That is a one coordinate system. Now, suppose you want to measure the angle in both uh, two uh, angle coordinates. That is both azimuth angle as well as the uh, another one. That is elevation angle. That is a two coordinate system. So in such cases, that means they are both are orthogonal. Uh, uh, this one uh, 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 azimuth angle means horizontal axis, and uh, this one is a vertical axis. Uh, elevation means vertical axis. So both are actually uh, orthogonal to each other. So these are orthogonal angle information what we have to get. So in such cases, now how many uh, feed horns are required? So we actually need minimum of four feed horns. As I told over here, we need actually four feed horns. And both are actually illuminating on the single reflector antenna, parabolic reflector antenna. So in this case, we have to rotate the uh, feed horns or we have to get the information from left side, uh, right side, uh, top and bottom. All four, four directions, four sectors or four directions, right, left, up and down. So that means four scanning beams are required in all the directions and we have to calculate the azimuth angle error and uh, elevation angle error. Okay, that is one way of doing it. Another way of doing this, we have we can use a cluster of say five feed horns. Five feed horns out of four, uh, five feed five, five, uh, five feed horns. One feed horn can be used for a transmission purpose, and remaining four can be used for up uh, reception purpose or receiving the signal. 
echo signals that is again up and down right and left on a sequential basis we can use it so that's why it is called sequential method or uh, lobe switching lobe means radiation beam switching a lobe or radiation beam now later this was done earlier later what people found is instead of using uh, say five feed horns or maybe four feed horns or whatever what can be done is you can use a single feed horn and the same single feed horn is rotated in all directions in all the directions that method is actually called conical scanning method using single feed horn a squinted feed horn can be used single squinted feed horn can be used and that is rotated in a direction all the direction so it actually forms a beam rotation here beam rotation axis also it forms a beam rotation axis so this is a beam rotation axis this is a rotation rotation is done in all, all the directions okay now this is the beam axis this is the rotation axis you can see this is at a particular position particular interval of time this is the beam axis this is the rotation axis this is the where the target is present let us assume this in this direction now the difference between the beam axis and the rotation axis will give you something called as squint angle the offset angle you can say a squint angle okay now we have assumed that the target is at a particular position a okay and we get a receive echo signals we get a echo signals from the target and the amplitude of those echo signals whatever we get and you know it goes to the receiver finally that will be modulated modulated means the amplitude actually changes proportional to the frequency of scanning or how frequently you are rotating it what is the frequency of conical scanning uh, is depending on that so what exactly the meaning of this i will explain in the next slide now the amplitude whatever you receive uh, is actually depends on so many other parameters that is one is the shape of this radiation beam the antenna beam uh, second thing is uh, it is uh, the squint angle what is form what is forming over here the other thing is the angle between uh, this target axis and the rotation axis so all these things will decide what is the amplitude of the received echo signal is the magnitude or amplitude what about the phase the phase of the received echo signal depends on this target axis and the rotation axis and based on the signal what we receive in a different directions we calculate the magnitude of the angle error that is amplitude of the error signal and that error signal we decide in which direction we need to rotate the antenna if the target in the direction of say the rotation axis exactly now when when i rotate it when the beam axis and rotation axis matches then we get a zero amplitude now i told this line i told about this the signal amplitude will be modulated at a frequency equal to the rotation frequency of the beam so just look at this animation now this is uh, my antenna this is the antenna this is the radiation beam this is the rotation what i am doing this is the target i have okay so as this this uh, blue color actually represents uh, the rotation of the beam okay this is the target when when it is exactly at the target exactly at the target see the amplitude the amplitude is maximum the amplitude is maximum so the change in the amplitude of the echo signal is proportional to the scanning frequency that means how frequently it changes the amplitude changes over here that depends on the rotation of this if i rotate this fast scanning is fast conical scanning is fast this see this is a conical scanning because it actually when i rotate like this it forms a conical shape that's why it is called conical shaping uh, conical uh, uh, lobing or, or scanning you can say <clears throat> now see if i rotate this fast the change in the amplitude is also fast the change in the amplitude means the modulation of the amplitude okay now this is a conical uh, scanning i told this is the block diagram of the conical scanning tracking radar how can be how it's a two coordinate system whatever whatever explained over here is a two coordinate system where this block is a transmitter block the function of the transmitter is just to generate uh, uh, pulses and transmit it through the duplexer again duplexer is used to connect uh, both the transmitter as well as receiver so all these are the parts of the receiver okay it is connected to the duplexer then given to the rotary joints and then get connected to the antenna so i have a parabolic reflector antenna and these are the motors servo motors see i have a elevation servo motor azimuth uh, servo mo uh, servo motor which are controlled by the receiver section the error signal whatever you get from the receiver section see this this is controlled by this elevation uh, servo motor this um, an amplitude controls uh, azimuth uh, servo motor i have a two uh, more motors uh, which uh, is called scanning motor and uh, reference generator so both are actually used to these are used to generate uh, the two air, uh, phase orthogonal signals 
orthogonal signals which are used as a reference signal in the angle error detector this angle error detector is nothing but it is the phase detector so this generates some reference signal over here this antenna will generate this motor will generate some reference signals now again the antenna this parabolic antenna and the feed horn whatever we have a single feed horn because i say conical scanning uses single feed horn and rotate it in all direction so they it should be in the squinted means the, it has to form some angle it's not in the same uh, you know the focal length of the antenna it should be kept somewhere some somewhere here maybe or maybe on the rear side rear side is better compared to keeping it a front side so a rear feed antenna is actually basically used and that is squinted by some angle either antenna can be squinted with reference to the feeder or feeder can be squinted with reference to the reference to the antenna and this uh, is generated and it is rotated something like this the rotation is based on this these are controlled by this error signals it forms a again a both side direction it go when it goes to both side direction and it tracks the uh, particular uh, perfect uh, tracking happens with the target now now just look at uh, this section first this part which is used to get a range information uh, through rotary joints which is not shown actually we get a let us say we got a echo signal that goes to this part duplexer to the duplexer to the receiver part that is receiver with the agc automatic gain control second detector is nothing but say envelope detector which is used to generate a amplitude here proportional to the echo signal then we have a range gate so what is that range gate is the function of the range gate is a range gate uh, what it exactly does is it eliminates noise the first function the second function is so when we receive a echo signal we can have a multiple targets over here but i want to target only one target so what it does is it removes the echo signals of all the other targets except whichever you want to track so range gate allows only the one echo signal whichever you want to track you can lock into that particular amplitude or a target echo signal and based on that it generates a error signal so this and this compare phase detector in the phase detector elevation phase detector and this reference signal and this error signal is compared and based on the phase difference between this signal and this signal or maybe this signal and this signal we get a magnitude of the error signals here both are ampli amplified by using these amplifiers and they are used to drive the motors particular motors and depending on the error signal these motors will change its you know rotate and change the direction of the antenna towards the both side direction fine and like that it will actually control uh, the uh, or track the targets we can say uh, all these points i have explained already and one more point which i miss i believe is uh, this one the rotation speed is 30 rpms rotation per uh, or revolution per second so other points i think i explained how we can uh, control uh, uh, the direction of the or rotation of the antenna is maybe electrical method or maybe hydraulic uh, driven uh, uh, motors can be used okay these things also i explained i believe okay elevation angle azimuth angle center row these errors can be generated by using 90 degree uh, phase signals cos and sin this also i explained my receiver is a super heterodyne receiver because i am using a mixer over there okay uh, then range gates fine all these things i explained you just go through the points now <clears throat> now so we get a video signal we get a video signal in the range gate and see the amplitude of those uh, pulses what i am receiving echo signals it is changing the so modulation of these echo signals i said depends upon the scanning frequency let us say this is a peak to the peak we consider and this is one scanning frequency one this forms one complete rotation between the peak to the peak negative peak to the uh, negative peak or maybe positive peak to the positive peak see the amplitude it is changing amplitude is changing here as i showed also in the animation one complete rotation okay amplitude continuously changes we get a maximum we may get a minimum whatever depending on the Uh, position of the uh, antenna with respect to the target now by this uh, is always better uh, in case of uh, you know uh, uh, conical scanning to have a stretched representation something like this that means not uh, something like like this but stretched representation how to get that we can get this this is nothing but simple charging and discharging correct just see hold the charge again you know charging hold the charge sample and hold circuit i can use to get this type of representation by this representation okay so i use a sample and hold circuit or is also called box carrying looks like a box box carrying so it charges something like this i can say see how exactly it can be generated we can say that say this is charging it will hold the level again charging hold the level charging 
hold the level, charging, hold the level, again charging, hold the level. So we get a signal something like this. Okay, so this is this is useful in the scanning radars. So we can generate by that by using a sample and hold circuit. So wherever you have a range gate uh, receivers, this is good. Okay, now the requirement actually here is within the one scanning frequency, you should have a minimum of four pulses. That's what I have shown actually here. Between this negative peak to this negative peak, I have a four pulses. So if you have a minimum of four pulses, then uh, generating an angle error or the that you know, error signals becomes very easy or accurate. The measurement of the angle information is actually very accurate if we are having a four minimum of four pulses 10 better uh, that's what i said 10 times 10 is better that means just look at this this is actually one uh, prf right this is one prf and this is the scanning frequency so the prf is greater than scanning frequency how many times four times because there are four pulses so you can say that the prf is equal to four times the scanning frequency here conical scanning frequency here but 10 times is better uh, to measure the information accurately. Fine. Okay. So in this video, I explained what is conical scanning and sequential lobing. Okay. The difference is in the sequential lobing, we use four feed horns, maybe five feed horns. But in the conical scanning, only one feed horn is used and it is rotated up, down, right, left direction in all the directions. And we can calculate the azimuth angle uh, error as well as uh, elevation angle error by using this method. Thank you for watching this video.